Hey guys, welcome to Nyo Cooking, the place for Southeast Asian comfort food. When we talk about comfort food, soups will be definitely one of the dishes that I really really love. And today, may I present you how to cook pakute. Now, pakute loosely translates to meat bone tea. The meat that it refers to is actually pork. And now, uh, to how it came uh, about to be called pakute, there are many variations to its story, but I'll tell you all on the website nyoyakooking.com and that's where we will have the whole recipe. Now, with regards to pakute, there are many variations. We have the Hokkien version, which we will be attempting today. We have also the Teochew version, which is also slightly different and is more popular in Singapore. The Hokkien version is dark in color, it has more herbs in it, it is also very popular in Malaysia. So I'm going to show you how to prepare this but before I begin I have to tell you that there is a lot of research that I've already put into um, coming up with this recipe because I wanted you to make this wherever you are. There are also some tips and tricks on how to get these herbs if you are not able to hunt them down. So head on to the website to know more. Now let's just begin with blanching the pork because we want to get rid of the impurities. While waiting for the water to boil, here's what I will be using today. I have a uh, pork shoulder, which is also known as pork butt. And uh, here, these are some um, pork bones with some meat stuck to it. You can also use pork ribs um, and also pork belly, but that's a fattier meat. So it really depends on what you want. I like the meat to be slightly leaner, but still that there, is, uh, there are some fats around. Now that the water is boiling, I'm going to add a few slices of ginger and very carefully we're going to place the pork into this pot. Once the water begins boiling again, that's when we're going to remove the meat from the water and then discard the water. Once you've removed the pork, you can give it a quick rinse just to remove any impurities that are still uh, sticking around uh, the meat and then set it aside. The next step is to prepare smoked garlic. Smoked garlic can be found in Singapore or Malaysia and it is also usually known as bakute garlic. Now if you don't have it and you can't find it just like me, now we are going to do a very quick uh, smoking of garlic and that is just in a pan. Um, we are going to toast or roast it without any oil, without any water whatsoever. It's going to be dry and this pan is also already heated. So it's going to take a few minutes until it starts to brown um, and remember to remove whatever skin, dry skin that you get from the garlic itself because there are many layers to it. So as long as you can see the bulb, then you're good to go. We will now move on to the herbs. Of course, you can get the pre-mixed herbs in supermarkets. But over here, I've broken them down for you. And if you go to different uh, Chinese medicinal hall or if you go to different uh, shops, they will have different variety of herbs coming together to create this bakute that we all love. So uh, each individual restaurant would have their own secret ingredients. Now, I have a whole list of ingredients which you can sort of select uh, but there is a minimum uh, amount of ingredients that you should select uh, and that would be about six to seven types of herbs that will be best and uh, over here I'm going to show you two sets of herbs so first we'll look at all the different types of Chinese medicinal herbs and on the other side we're going to look at aromatics so these herbs would be giving all the different aromas and flavors to this soup first of all we'll take a look at the Chinese medicinal herbs over here, I have foxglove root, mandarin peel, angelica root. This is what we call poor man's ginseng or also known as tongsam. Sichuan low wedge, licorice root or also known as kan chao, and solomon seal. The rest of the ingredients are black dates, red dates and also goji berries. So these three ingredients, the last three ingredients are much more used in soups. Black dates are actually processed red dates and uh, they are very smoky in flavour. 
So we're going to be using both of them and if you're using red dates, remember to remove the seeds and to know how to remove seeds, to know how to store red dates, head on to nyonyacooking.com. Over there, I have more um, information for you. Now that we have looked at all the Chinese medicinal herbs that we will require for this recipe, I'm going to show you next the aromatics. So over here, I have cassia bark, star anise, citron peppercorns, fennel seeds, and also cloves. It will be best if you can blend this into powder and then just uh, put it into a tea bag. Now if you don't want to do it, you can of course just use it as it is, that is also not an issue. As mentioned, you can use a tea bag or if you have a herb net, you can store all these herbs and then place it into the pot. Now, I do not have any of them in hand, so I'm just going to be a bit more creative. I'm going to use kitchen towels. Um, you need to ensure that the kitchen towels are thick. That means it has to be in good quality. And I'm going to use two layers uh, whereby I'm going to place the herbs and then just use a string to tie it and we're going to place it into the pot. Now that the bag of medicinal herbs are already in the pouch, I'm going to move on with the aromatics. As I mentioned, if you have a tea bag, it will look so much better. I'm just going to cut the tip off. We're done with all the preparation, we can finally cook. Now when it comes to bakute, what you really want is this soft meat that falls off the bone. Really, really delicious and succulent. And then, you must have a very flavorful broth. So, over here, I have a big pot and this is where we are going to cook our bakute first. With the pork that we had earlier, I'm just going to place it into this pot. So because we had a few bigger chunks, which were the pork shoulder, I'm just going to cut them into smaller pieces. So this will be just cut into bite sizes. Once the meat is in the pot, we're going to add water. So this is just hot water. I just would like to speed up the cooking process. And then we are going to add the garlic just because we did not wrap this uh, dates so I'm just going to add them if you have a tea bag or herb net of course you can add the dates uh, as well into them so I because I just did not wrap it that's why I'm adding it on the side the aromatics and also the rest of the herbs just have enough water to ensure that it covers all the ingredients. It's very important to use uh, a good quality kitchen towel or else you might break while cooking because now we're going to boil it for at least 4 hours. Now if you do not have 4 hours, uh, then you can boil this for 2 hours, then it should be sufficient. But I love to boil it for at least 4 hours and then that is when you get all the flavours. Now, this is an insider tip. If you go to restaurants, you'll realize that the uh, meat is really, really soft and it's also very flavorful. It's much more flavorful when we do it at home. And sometimes it's because that they have cooked this twice. So they would be cooking it uh, one night before and then the next day, they're going to cook it uh, again for the second time. You can do that because that will mean that you'll get a more flavorful broth. Uh, otherwise, uh, two to four hours would be sufficient as well. I'm going to show you what we're going to do later but for now let's just let it boil because we're going to add a few more sauces into it to make it dark and give it the color that we know from Hokkien Bakute. Um, for those of you who do not eat pork, you can always use chicken as a substitute and there you have chikute. So let's let it boil and we'll get back to you later. The soup has been boiling for about 30 minutes and that's when we will add uh, soy sauce, oyster sauce,
and then lastly black sauce and for those of you who might be wondering this is actually uh, dark soy sauce it's slightly thick it's not that salty it only gives color to the dish and then lastly we will also add a bit of salt stir well then we're just going to let, going to let this continue uh, boiling Finally, it's about 4 hours right now and I'm just going to show you a quick while. So it's been simmering for about 4 hours and just before we serve, I'm going to add a dash of white pepper. Stir it around and now I'm going to increase the heat. Once it starts boiling, then I'm going to remove it. Now to serve, you can do it immediately of course. Remove the herbs, remove the aromatics and then you can serve it. Um, but uh, if you go to Bakute restaurants, you would also see that Bakute is then served with some mushrooms, vegetables, tofu skins and so on. So I'm going to do the same thing and usually they do not boil all these extra ingredients together with the main pot of broth. So because the oil from the tofu skin or fujok would change the taste of bakute same goes to mushrooms and also vegetables you do not add it together in this whole pot so they would usually have a big pot where they boil the bakute and uh, when you order something they will always have a smaller clay pot where they scoop the soup or the broth into the smaller clay pot and then serve it to you so i'm just going to show you now that it's already boiling no set. and then i'm going to place this aside I'm going to use a smaller cast iron pot Revealing bakute So just treat this like um, the base of the soup So I'm just going to scoop out some pork meat Without the dates We're going to let this boil again, so I'm going to add Fujo or tofu skin And then I call this tofu puffs or tofu pork And remember to rinse them with hot water just to get rid as much oil as possible Because this tofu skin and also uh, tofu puffs are actually fried in uh, uh, oil so you would want to remove as much oil as possible and then I like to add enoki mushroom so you can also add dried shiitake mushroom of course uh, soak them first and let them hydrate but I love enoki mushrooms with bakute so when the water is really rolling like that you just place it at the side I'm just gonna close it for a while just give it a few minutes now you do not need to separate this into two different pots if you're not going to have bakute separately at separate times or maybe you're going to have a second round for example uh, at a later time of the day so you can do this if there is a bigger uh, group of people Now that this is rolling, we add the vegetables that's about it. There you go, bakute. So this is how they serve it with uh, in a, in a clay pot, but I'm using a cast iron pot, which is also very pretty. And of course, I'm really really excited because you cannot get bakute uh, in Germany, so I'm going to taste it right now. Before we begin, let me tell you, my perfect bakute has to be this delicious broth that I was telling you about. So let's just try it. Oh, wow. Mmm. It's so delicious. I love the soy sauce taste in this um, soup, but what's most important are all the herbal ingredients that comes together. 
and I can understand why Malaysians or um, Singaporeans we all love Bakute, although they may be different. But uh, let's just talk about this particular version, which is the Hokkien version. It's slightly more saltier than its counterpart, um, and of course darker in color. But what I really really love is this herbal taste, and although it is a hot piping dish, uh, we eat it even if the weather is really really hot out there. Now the other part to bakute that is really good is that the meat must be really tender. So it cannot be tough meat because if it's tough, it's no fun. So there's a bit of meat. Oh, now you can see the meat coming off. Look at that. Of course, you need to have a bit of broth. Looks really soft. I cannot wait to try this out. Mm. This meat is fantastic. It's so, so soft. And I really, really love it. So please do try it out. I know many of you guys requested for it. Um, on the website, I'm going to give you more instructions, more tips. And I cannot wait to see you there. And once you have recreated this dish, remember to send me a photo uh, of the recipe. I cannot wait to see that. Now, bakute is served with white rice or um, shallot uh, rice. So, fried shallot rice actually. So, it's just white rice mixed with fried shallot. Um, and if you want to take a look at how to make fried shallots, you have the recipe in the link um, below, down in the description box. Or, I have another recipe for you which is yam rice and that will be coming later. But anyway, you can also find the link in the description box below and that will be coming very very soon. So I cannot wait to see you on our website. That's where you find all the good stuff and all the free recipes. And if you have not subscribed to our channel, if this is your first video, then welcome. Please subscribe to the channel and till then, I'll see you uh, and I'll wish you happy cooking.